Good evening, everybody. As the Giants suffered some torture tonight, and we're on the right side of torture tonight. And this was a very tough game. They hung in there and managed to get the victory tonight, 5-4. to four. You can follow on Facebook, Twitter, and most important, you can... <laughs> Please be kind and hit that subscribe button. Really good outing tonight for the Giants. And it went the way it should have went. But also, it was a crazy night because earlier today, Johnny Cueto hurt his ankle working out and is now going to go on the 10-day disabled list. But all is not lost there. It looks like he's only going to miss a couple starts and then should be back in the rotation by the end of the month. So that's the good news there, hopefully. Starting in place was rookie Tyler Beatty, who got thrown in the wolves kind of early and gave up two earned runs in the first inning when A.J. Pollock doubled to left to score Sterling Marte and Paul Goldschmidt. And that was the score for the majority of the game. But after that, Beatty settled down afterwards. He he did okay. It did walk five batters and struck out three. It's not great, but definitely not bad for a rookie who was thrown into the fire rather quickly due to out of necessity more than anything, anything else. But he went four strong, two. Two earned runs, three hits, five walks, and wound up getting the no decision, so that's not too bad there. And then Patrick Corbin, for the most part, was able to keep the silence the Giants' bats for five and a third innings until the sixth inning. Yeah, back to B, five walks, ERA of 4.5, and... and Beatty certainly is going to get one more opportunity and make some corrections. And I'm looking forward to seeing what, what adjustments he makes in the second start next, next week for the Giants. And also the corresponding moves with uh, Cueto on the disabled list. Uh, tomorrow you're going to see Andrew Suarez make his Major League debut for the Giants. So we'll see how that works out for him. And certainly Beatty will get one more opportunity to start and then get some more, and then get the work in and hopefully you can cut down on the walks. Five walks is not usually a good spot to be. Cut down on the walks. Uh, he's usually known to be wild in the early innings and then he settles down. That's something he can w certainly work on with, with uh, Kurt Young in the coming days. That's certainly something he should take advantage of while he's up with the Giants. He'll get one more opportunity before he goes back to Sacramento. As Samarja is nearing a return, he will, uh, Jeff, speaking of Jeff Samarja, he will make a rehab start this weekend in San Jose. So he will be with the San Jose Giants this weekend, making a rehab start and should be able to rejoin the rotation sometime next week. So that definitely helps things out there. But I, I certainly think there, there's a lot of thing, a lot of positives you could take from Beatty. He's definitely got a lot of upside. I think definitely if he takes the time to work with Kurt Young and learn learn from his mistakes and figure and cut down on the walks, I certainly think he could be a potential being an ace in the majors or certainly be a fit in the Giants' rotation later this season. And certainly the injuries last year for him in Sacramento didn't exactly help him out. I'm, I'm very interested to see how his second start is, and I'm really interested to see how he does through another full year of seasoning in Sacramento.
because th that's one thing this major league experience he can he can definitely use the major league experience to make this the proper adjustments as players get healthy as say as Samarja and Cueto return to the lineup. Now on the other side, Patrick Corbin, five and a third, three earned runs, nine Ks, nine strikeouts, another good strikeout total. He's striking out a lot of batters this year, but the Giants were able to get to Corbin in the sixth inning, which was a really good sign. And McCutcheon drew a walk in the sixth, and then Belt scored on the walk to McCutcheon, and then Posey sacrifices to right to score to score Austin Jackson, and then and then Brandon Belt sacrifices to score Hunter Pence sacrifices to score Belt, and then on a play which I thought. Andrew McCutcheon was safe, which was later overturned on replay, which they deemed an out. And I thought McCutcheon was safe on the play. Probably a poor review, poor eyes tonight in the situation room. But I think that that definitely limited, I think the D-backs definitely got lucky on that call. And I think the Giants... Should have been at 4-2 by then, and then we wouldn't have had that blown save situation. But Arizona, they are a scrappy team, too. And then on a strikeout by Longoria, ended up being a double steal in the bottom. Let's go to the top of seven first. Then in the seventh, Sterling Mart. Not Sterling Marte. Patel Marte doubles to left to score. Doubles to right, excuse me, to score Di Jared Dyson. That tied the game back up at three apiece. Then in the bottom of the eighth, Longoria strikes out. But the second baseman bobbled the ball on a on a throwing error, which allowed McCutcheon to score for the double steal. Marte, the bad Marte shows up with a fielding error, with a catching error there, which caused Andrew McCutcheon to score to make the score five, four to three. And then, and then on a mistake pitch by Hunter Strickland in the bottom of the ninth, the top of the ninth inning, Goldschmidt bombed it out into right out in the left field and made Strickland pay for the mistake, which ended up being Strickland's first blown save of the season, which tied the game back at four. But then McCutcheon, McCletchen time, Andrew McCletchen. That is, does it again. As he goes clutch with a single to center to score Kelby Tomlinson to send the fans home happy with a 5-4 victory. And I'd say the, for the most part, the bullpen was pretty brilliant for the Giants tonight. Reyes Maranta, two scoreless innings, really good, good stuff out of Maranta tonight. Osich, uh, Osich was Osich tonight. Earned run without a recording and out. And then Garen. Gearing came in and shut him down. That was really good out good good work by Corey Garen to limit the damage. Tony Watson was good. And then Strickland, as I said, just a, a mistake pitch that ended up going down the middle and that pitch, that looked like a ball on the on a tee where that pitch was located. Whereas on the D-back side, Fernando Salas was solid. Chafin won unearned run, but the walks got him. So he had two walks there. And then Jorge de la Rosa gave, giving up the free passes tonight. So 
really good job by the Giants for taking a lot of free passes here in the, the late innings to create these rally situations. Definitely something that really worked out well. And then Buster Posey going two for three tonight. Austin Jackson, two for four. One of his better starts as a Giant thus far. And then Dyson and Goldschmidt were the ones doing the damage for the Diamondbacks tonight. Two for four for Goldschmidt. Two for five for Dyson. And most importantly, the Giants get at least one win in the series. And then tomorrow will be a matinee game. No pot. There will be no show tomorrow. Tomorrow, you, as I said, Andrew Suarez will make his Major League debut. He'll be going up against Robbie Ray tomorrow afternoon. And this will be a 12-35 game before the Giants head to San Diego after that for a four-game series against the, the Padres. And certainly this would be a great, this would be a good confidence boost that the Giants can get a win tomorrow. And, and be able to stay in second place while heading down to San Diego to play the Padres, who are never an easy task themselves, who always play the Giants hard. And that series is never a give, is never a gimme. And it looks like the Padres are now at four and eight as we go, as we get into MLB roundup here soon enough. As it's looking like it's going to be the wild, wild west. It's starting to live up to its name this year. And of course, this Petco is never an easy task there. And certainly tonight did not look like a sellout. It was a lot of empty seats. I think tonight's attendance was And then tonight's attendance was 37869 not a sellout at all. And I think tomorrow we could certainly see attendance be at its lowest we've seen in years. Somewhere near probably I think 30, 30 to 35,000 tomorrow, I think, will probably be the attendance tomorrow's game. But this will be the last uh, game on the homestand before the Giants go on the road. And as I said, they, they go to AT&T Park South, known as Petco Park. And of course, that's never an easy task for the Giants, as the Padres are always game to play the Giants, it seems like. And that'll be a four-game series. Then after that, they play the D-backs again for three at Chase Field. That'll be a series starting April 17th. Then after that, they go to Orange County to play the Angels for three. Before returning home to play the Nationals on April 23rd. So we, we could see our first glimpse of Shoei Otani ver on the next during this road trip as we definitely will have some bay area orange county rivalry going on this next few weeks as on the other in other sports the sharks are going to be playing the ducks starting on thursday that'll conclude for tonight let's go to the mlb roundup for tonight 
The Rays beat the White Sox 6-5. to five. Your winning pitcher, Blake Snell. Your losing pitcher, Carson Fulmer, who only goes four and two-thirds innings pitched. Four runs, three earned. Six walks will never win you games. Now, six walks, uh, two hit by pitches. And I think certainly the benches were war might have been warned too. We'll see. Nope, no bench warnings, but two hit by pitches by by Fulmer, six walks, just not a good night for him. Three four runs, three earned. Bullpen, not that much better tonight. Gregory Infante gives up an earned run. Where Snell was excellent tonight, an earned run in six innings pitched. Ten strikeouts. The only bad news was five free passes by Snell. Wildly effective. And then Ryan Weber, three runs, one earned in one-third of an inning pitched. And then Tyler Saldino, two for three. Jose Abreu, two for five with the home run. The Pirates beat the Cubs eight to five. Your winning pitcher, Ivan Nova. Your losing pitcher, Tyler Chatwood. Corey Dickerson, three for five for the Pirates, as he's the gift that continues to keep on giving for Pittsburgh. Francisco Cervelli, three for four. Sterling Marte with a bomb, and, and then Cervelli also had a, his first home run of the season. And for Chicago, Wilson Contreras, three for four for the Cubbies today. And Chatwood, five earned runs in five innings pitched. Nova was pretty good today. Edgar Santana, two earned runs in two-thirds of an innings pitched. And then Mike Montgomery, three earned runs and two innings pits for Chicago today. Just not a good day for the Cubbies. The Indians beat the Tigers 2-1. Your winning pitcher, Andrew Miller. Your losing pitcher, Alex Wilson. Jose Ramirez, two for three for the Indians with a home run. With a home run. And Roberto Perez, two for two for the with a home run. Jaimer Candelario, three for three for the Tigers. And really good outing out of Matt Boyd. Earned run in seven innings pitched. Tyler Olson and earned run in one third of an inning pitch for the Indians. And the Red Sox. Clobber the clobber the Yankees today, fourteen to one. As yes, it was def as it as it was sailing for Chris Sale today. The only bright spot for the Yankees today was here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Three for four for Aaron Judge with a bomb. Giancarlo Stanton, two for four. Gets his average up to 196. But for the Red Sox, Mookie Betts, four for four. Have yourself a game bet and a home run to boot. Alex Benatendi, Andrew Benatendi, two for three for the Red Sox today. Hanley Ramirez, two for two. And Luis Severino, oh, not a good day for him. Five innings pitched, five earned runs on eight hits. We just got shelled today. It was worse for Tommy Canley. 
five runs, three earned, and two-thirds of an inning pitched. Chase and Shreve comes in, four unearned runs and one and a third innings pitched. And that just... And, and Chris Sale, six, six innings pitched, one earned run and eight strikeouts. As the Red Sox are now nine and one to start the season and have found their bats this year. The Blue Jays beat the Orioles two to one. Your winning pitcher, Anibal Sanchez, you're losing Aaron Sanchez, excuse me. Aaron Sanchez, you're losing pitcher Darren O'Day. And Curtis Granderson hit his first home run as a Blue Jay today. And Sanchez, one earned run and eight innings pitched, five walks. That was the only downside. Ka Andrew Kashner had a good outing. Seven innings pitched, six strikeouts. Normally a win, but not today. O'Day loses it in the bottom of the ninth. And Miguel Castro, an unearned run for the for the Orioles. And the Nationals beat the Braves 4-1. to one. Your winning pitcher, Steven Strasburg. Your losing pitcher, Mike Fulte-Nevitz. And Strasburg, eight strikeouts, eight innings pitched. Excellent outing out of Strasburg. Tammy Solis, an earned run and one-third of an inning pitched. And Fulte Nevis, three runs to earn in five innings pitched for the Braves today. The Phillies beat the Reds 6-1. to one. Your winning pitcher, Aaron Nola. Your losing pitcher, Jared Hughes. Nola, eight innings pitched, one earned run. Three walks today. Really excellent, excellent outing for the Phillies today. Homer Bailey actually did not look too bad. Six innings pitched, one earned run, seven Ks. ERA right now, 3.24. So Homer Bailey's starting to look like the ace that the Reds were looking for when they re-signed him a few years ago to that huge contract. And then Hughes gives up an earned run in one inning pitched. Tanner Rainey comes in four earned runs in one inning pitched for the for the Reds. And the Mets improve to nine and one as they beat the Marlins eight to six. Your winning pitcher Hansel Robles. Your losing pitcher Brad Ziegler. Brian Anderson, two for three. As it looks like Martin Prado could definitely get his contract eaten very soon. And have yourself a game, Justin Bohr. Two for five with two home runs. But on the other side, Azdubal Cabrera, two for four with two home runs for the Mets. And Wilmer Flores with a home run. Be the, that ended up being the game winner for the Mets. Jacob DeGrom, not great for DeGrom standards. Four earned runs, six innings pitched, six strikeouts. Eric Lou, two earned run. Kyle Bericlou, two earned runs, one inning pitched. Ziegler, two runs, one earned, and one inning pitched. And J. Rus Familia already with six saves on the season. Oh, and it was. Oh, it was a Texas barbecue tonight. No, no, it was not on the good as the Angels put a Texas chainsaw massacre on the Rangers tonight. 11 to 1, your winning pitcher, Tyler Skaggs, your losing pitcher, Miguel Perez.
Jeffrey Marte, three for five tonight. Martin Maldonado, three for five for the Angels. Mike Trout hits his fourth home run of the season. Andrew Simmons gets his first home run of the season. Skaggs, seven, er, seven strikeouts and five innings pitched. Perez only goes eight, only goes three innings, eight earned runs, four walks in three innings pitched. Jesse Chavez, two earned runs in three innings pitched. And Texas looks like a team that's about ready to tear it down to the bolts at this point. The Twins beat the Astros 4-1. to one. Your winning pitcher, Jake Odorizzi. Your losing pitcher, Dallas Keuchel. Not a good day for Keuchel. Joe Maurer, two for three for the Twins today. And for the, for the Astros, J.D. Davis, two for three. Michael only survives four innings, allowing three earned runs, six strikeouts, four walks. Definitely not good when you're giving up four walks. But then Odorizzi was six effective, one earned run, but the downside was the five walks for Jake Odorizzi today. And then Joe Smith gives up an earned run in one inning pitch for the Astros tonight. The Cardinals beat the Brewers 5-3. to three. Your winning pitcher, Dominic Leone. Your losing pitcher, J.J. Hoover. Ray Garcia, 2-for-2 two two for the Cardinals. Jonathan Villar, 2-for-3 for, for the Brewers. And this game went 11 innings tonight. And Hoover, three earned runs and one inning pitched. And now owns an ERA of over 20.25. And then Bud Norris, an earned run tonight for the Cardinals. Matt Bowman, an earned run tonight for the Cardinals. The Mariners beat the Royals. Five to four, your winning pitcher, Felix Hernandez. Your losing pitcher, Eric Skogland. Gene Segura, two, three for five for the Mariners tonight. And King Felix definitely rebounded after that last start, going five and two-thirds innings, three earned runs. Skogland, five, five earned and four and two-thirds innings pitched. Blaine Boyer, three earned runs and one inning pitched. Now with an ERA of over 15.75. And the Padres have won two in a row as they beat the Rockies again 5-2. to two. Your winning pitcher, Joey Lucchese. Your losing pitcher, Brian Shaw. Jose Perella, 3-5. for five. Is now at 302. Eric Hosmer, two for three for the Friars. And, and Trevor Story hits his third home run of the season. And Lucchese, two unearned runs tonight with eight Ks. He might be someone that's looking like possibly who could be the ace for the Padres this season at this point. And then Tyler Anderson was good on his own end, but the bullpen blows it from Shaw. Three earned runs in one inning pitch for Colorado. And the L.A. Dodgers beat the Oakland A's 4 to nothing. Ayujin Ryu gets the win. The losing pitcher is Sean Manea. Sean Manea allows five, two earned runs and five innings pitched. Liam Hendricks, two earned runs without recording an out. And Ryujin Ryu gives up one walk and eight strikeouts in six innings pitched.
and down on the farm tonight. And tonight in their home opener, the Sacramento Rivercats lose to the Reno Aces 7-2. Your winning pitcher, Brandon Braden Shipley. Your losing pitcher, Yoan Gregorio. Gregorio goes three earned, two, three earned, three runs, two earned. In two innings pitch, Jose Flores, two runs, one earned. And Steven Duggar is over the Mendoza line, going two for four tonight. And Mac Williamson only had one, only went a pathetic one for three tonight. But that pathetic one hit was a bomb into the Sacramento River. So that certainly makes up for it. And the River Cats improved their record too. Oh, and Daniel Robertson was ejected in this game for arguing. And now the River Cats are three and three at this point. And on the other side of Highway 99, the Fresno Grizzlies get blown out by the Tacoma Rainiers tonight, thirteen to nothing. Ben Gamble goes two for four. And Christian Bergman, seven shutout innings for the Rainiers. Mike Hoschild, he was actually good. Six scoreless innings, but the bullpen. Wah, wah. Matt Ramsey, two earned runs and one inning pitch. Jacob Doris, four earned runs and one inning pitched. Chris Nunn, five earned runs and one third of an inning pitched. Antonio Nunez, two earned runs without recording an out. Now, tonight was also opening night in downtown Fresno at Chuck Chansey Park. We're going to do more of a Grizzly show on Friday show. Their attendance tonight was 10,198. And at least this will be a good start towards downtown Fresno revitalization. Well, I will see you guys on Thursday night. Hopefully we won't have too much of an overlap with Teal Town USA and the Sharks game on Thursday night. Hopefully we'll get wrapped up quickly with the Giants win at Petco, and then we can have a really good show and then end it quickly so I can go, go on to Teal Town. Everybody have a good night, and we will see you, see you Thursday night. Good night.